Hey guys, so today we'll be covering a very important topic is why precocious puberty is seen in case of hypothyroidism. So we know what is precocious puberty. Precocious puberty is when uh, you see secondary sexual character in girls in less than eight years and in boys less than nine and a half years. Okay, so uh, this one important point I want to clarify that precocious puberty and delayed puberty both are associated with hypothyroidism but the precocious puberty is a rare phenomena it's uh, the uh, delayed puberty is more commonly seen in hypothyroidism okay so what happens you know this is a pituitary that i have drawn here this is the thyroid and this is the ovary attached to the uterus so what happened the tsh that is secreted by the pituitary it, it should be acting on the thyroid right and the lh and fsh which is uh, which acts on the ovaries okay okay uh, there's one thing I want to tell that LH, FSH and TSH and HCG also but TSH and FSH more commonly they have a structural similarity that is they have a common beta subunit okay so they all have a common beta subunit. So when there will be increased TSH in case of hypothyroidism there will be elevated TSH so this TSH because it has a property similar to FSH it, it will act on the FSH receptor present on the ovaries. So there will be continuous triggering of FSH receptors that will lead to increase in production of sex hormones and there will be precocious puberty simple as that right so we know sex hormone is our estrogen and progesterone so with the effect of high estrogen there will be breast development you know there will be increase in growth spurt and there will be menarche or uterine bleeding okay and because there is continuous triggering and continuous stimulation of the ovaries, there will be formation of ovarian cyst also. Okay. So you will be a clinical, uh, the, the patient will be presenting to you with uh, uh, precocious puberty that is incomplete. Why there is incomplete? Why by incomplete uh, uh, adenarche it means that there will be no axillary and pubic hair. Why is it so? Because we are talking about the effect of estrogen here high level of estrogen not androgens we know the secondary sexual character that is axillary and pubic hair they this is caused by effect of ad adrenals they secrete estrogen right adrenal cortex if you remember they secrete androgens that is caused that causes uh, increase in axillary and pubic hair so this one syndrome that is associated it's van wick grumbach strain syndrome I hope I am pronouncing it correctly. So what you will see in this syndrome, first of all, this syndrome is seen with prolonged hypothyroidism, the mechanism that I have just explained, right? Uh, there will be precocious puberty associated with prolonged hypothyroidism. What else you will find? You will find ovarian cyst, which I told you here. Okay, and there will be incomplete adenarche, there will be no pubic and axillary hair, there will be breast development and there will be menarche. Okay, the estrogenic effect will be there. And one important thing that you should, that help you delineate is delayed bone age. In TSH, in hypothyroidism, we know there is always delayed bone age. So there will be, when you will be investigating uh, the patient, you will see, when you will see the x-ray for bone age, there will be delayed bone age. There will be increased TSH suggesting hypothyroidism the patient will be presenting with breast enlargement there will be a uh, uterine bleeding but you will not find pubic and axillary hair so this is one hint that you will get okay so i have tried to uh, do justice to this topic and this is how i have summed up thank you so much